People have asked me about the Math Without Borders logo. It's a pattern with two golden rectangles and a logarithmic spiral, but there's a lot more to the story. I can't tell the story without discussing some of the math, but if you skip over the hard parts, I think you'll understand. I got my first introduction to the golden rectangle and the golden ratio when I watched the classic film Donald in Math Magic Land, which was first shown on TV in 1961. I was in junior high school at the time. The film started with the proportions of a five-pointed star embedded in a pentagon and showed how these proportions led to a visually appealing rectangle that's found widely in art, architecture, and many natural phenomena. Most fascinating to me at the time was the way the golden rectangle could replicate itself infinitely. A golden rectangle minus a square leaves another golden rectangle. Remove another square and you have yet another golden rectangle. The pattern spirals around until it approaches a vanishing point at infinity. A smooth curve can be put through all the corner points and it forms a logarithmic spiral found in the nautilus shell and other spirals in nature. Disney didn't mention that this was a logarithmic spiral exactly, or even give an explicit recipe for constructing a golden rectangle, but he dropped enough hints along the way that based only on my memory of the movie, I filled in many of the gaps for myself over the years as my mathematical abilities matured. The fact that a golden rectangle minus a square leaves another golden rectangle allowed me as a high school student to work out the proportions, 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. I have since come to know that this ratio is well known and commonly referred to by the Greek letter phi. The ratio itself suggests a method of geometric construction. The diagonal from the midpoint of the base of a unit square to its opposite corner is the square root of 5 over 2, found from the Pythagorean theorem. Adding this to half of the base of the unit square, this gives the long dimension of the golden rectangle. Modern geometry tools like the geometer's sketch pad and GeoGebra allow you to capture and encapsulate a series of construction steps into a custom tool to replicate an entire construction process at will. This particular construction allowed me to produce the rectangle when given the short side. Experimenting further, I also found ways to do the construction when starting from the long side. I was now able to play with golden rectangles more fluently. Constructions of pentagons and five-pointed stars followed easily. I even used these insights to devise an origami construction of a regular pentagon. What about that spiral? Over the years, I have frequently seen nested golden rectangles with a spiral approximated as a series of quarter-circle arcs, but this seemed like cheating. It was merely pretending to understand. With modern geometry tools available, I didn't see why we had to settle for this approximation. I wanted the real thing. How would you construct a smooth spiral into the nested series of rectangles and squares? A logarithmic spiral is a curve that forms a constant angle with the radius vector. Another property is the self-similarity of the curve. An enlargement of the pattern is equivalent to a simple rotation of the original. I knew the equation for a logarithmic spiral, but to plot the spiral I needed to work outward from a center point. The problem was the center point for the spiral was the vanishing point for the pattern of rectangles and I didn't know exactly where the vanishing point would be. Drawing the pattern of nested rectangles all the way to the vanishing point would take an infinite number of steps. That didn't work for me. I needed to find a way to find the vanishing point directly. With a little playing around, I found that a diagonal across a horizontal rectangle would pass through the corners of every other horizontal rectangle. Since the rectangles approached zero size near the vanishing point, the diagonal would have to pass through the vanishing point itself. Constructing diagonals for two consecutive rectangles located the vanishing point exactly. I could work outward from the starting point to plot the spiral, but now I needed to find a way to work outward from the vanishing point to plot the rectangles. Playing with my golden toolkit, as I've come to call it, I've discovered other patterns of nested golden rectangles, leading to constructions that started from the vanishing point leading outward instead of always leading inward. This set the stage for matching a spiral to the nested rectangles. 
The equation for a logarithmic spiral has two constants. The constant k determines the spiraling angle, which determines the shape of the spiral. The constant a determines the scale. Fitting the spiral to a group of nested golden rectangles requires finding the right value for the constant k. This is where I was misled by the circular arc approximation. The circular arc pseudo-spiral is tangent to the sides at the corner points. I assumed this would still be true, so I used this fact to find the spiral angle. But that approach failed miserably. If it touched one corner point, it would miss the next one entirely. I needed a different rule to find the spiral angle. The solution came in a flash of insight. It's exciting when that happens. I noticed that as the pattern of rectangles was rotated 90 degrees, it grew by a factor of 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, phi, the golden ratio. So the spiral must do the same. With that insight, I was able to find the correct spiral angle and the value of k. I finally had a way to construct golden rectangles outward from the vanishing point. I had my logarithmic spiral. I had the value of k that would fit the spirals to the nested golden rectangles. And I had wonderful geometry tools that allowed me to encapsulate all of these methods and play with them like Legos. Now I was ready to play. I mean explore. I mean do mathematics. It's all the same thing, really. I found that golden rectangles would nest not just one way, as they did in the Mathmagic Land film, but many ways. Logarithmic spirals also fit the golden rectangles in not just one way, but many ways. They could touch tangent to each side. They could pass through the internal corners, or the external corners, or the centroids of the rectangles, or the centroids of the squares. In fact, they could be made to pass through any set of corresponding points in the nested sequence of rectangles. Going back to Mathmagic Land, I found the film is now out on DVD for under $10. And it's even on YouTube at the moment, for how long is anybody's guess. I went back and looked more carefully at the constructions shown in the film. I was pleased to find that the original film did not take the shortcut of crudely approximating the spiral with a series of quarter-circle arcs. It plotted a correct logarithmic spiral through the external corners. I was impressed. Disney and his mathematical consultants did not talk down to my junior high self. The film did it right, and in so doing it gave me room to grow. As a result, this one lesson from over 50 years ago stayed with me and inspired my curiosity and mathematical creativity repeatedly over the years. This is not the kind of thing you find on standardized tests. It's not part of the standard curriculum. Education prescriptions, driven by high-stakes testing, walk on by. This is exploration driven by curiosity. That's what real mathematics is. A good teacher is, first of all, a student. A teacher stimulates the love of learning by loving learning. He or she acts as a mentor, modeling the process of exploration and taking the students along for the ride. As a teacher, this is what I have always strived to do with my students.